Hello, math humans. We're going to do 5.7 today. We're going to talk about radical functions. So our objectives are that we're going to graph and translate radical functions. So oh, let's talk about a radical function. Alrighty, and my pen's not as narrow as I thought it was. Bummer. So f of x is going to equal the square root of x, and the graph of it looks like this. I can't take the square root of a negative number, which is why the graph starts at 0, and then over here, it's basically undefined. All right? So this would be the same thing as if I had written f of x is equal to x raised to the 1 half power, and then I could have any kind of root. I could have f of x is equal to the third root of x, and then that one's graph would look like this. It's a little bit different, right? Because I can take the square root or the cube root of a negative, and so it looks something like this. So that's kind of cool. Alrighty, so let's talk about some details for even roots. And so that would be like the square root of x, the fourth root of x, the fifth, oops, sorry, sixth root of x, etc. Remember that if I take the square root of a negative number, it's going to be imaginary, which means that it's also not going to show up on the real number plane. Alrighty, so since it doesn't show up, so it won't show on the graph, because the graph is real numbers, then that means the domain, oops, the domain of even roots is not our real numbers. So that being said, the graph of the third root, the domain, would be all real numbers. Uh, and then we'll talk about this as we kind of go through and define some of our graphs. Alrighty, so let's say I have f of x is equal to the square root of x. Then the graph is going to look like this. It's going to start at 0 and go that way. The domain would be 0 to positive infinity. I can take the square root of 0, it's just 0, but I can't take the square root of a negative number. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to translate things, just like we've done with every function that we have studied. And so now, this is inside the function, which means it moves the opposite direction. So it is going to be translated three units to the right. So then that means the domain is also translated three units to the right. So this is going to be 3 to positive infinity. So if I have f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 3, Remember, inside the function means it is the opposite sign, so then it would be, here's a negative 3, and so then my graph would go this way, and then my domain would be a negative 3 to positive infinity. Because if I have a negative 3 plus 3, I get a 0, and I can take the square root of 0, I just can't take the square root of a negative. Alrighty. And since we've already kind of introduced it, our last one would be f of x is equal to the cube root of x. And we've talked about this before. Since the graph kind of looks like this, the domain is all real numbers. But if I move that graph and I do the cube root of x minus 3, and so let's say I move this one 3 units to the right, so now my graph looks something like that, the domain is still all real numbers because I can take the cube root of a negative. Alrighty, so we can graph our functions just like we have every other function that we've studied. So in our first example, we're going to graph with a table of values. So for example number one, we're going to graph with a table of values. And then we want to identify the domain and range. And we're going to be given, ooh, somebody loves me. We're going to be given 
f of x is equal to 4 times the cube root of x plus 4. So we could do all of this math by hand, but let's say I'm given that the function is, here's my x values, and here are my, oops, sorry, f of x, my y values, and I want to do a negative 12, a negative 5, a negative 4, a negative 3, and 4. So I'm going to do this a couple of ways. On the first one, I'm going to actually substitute it into the function. And then on the next ones, I'm going to use my grapher. So if I did f of a negative 12, that would be 4 times the cube root of a negative 12 plus 4. So this is going to be 4 times the cube root of a negative 8. Well, the cube root of a negative 8 is a negative 2, so this is 4 times a negative 2, so this is a negative 8. So I could do all of those by hand, but I can also do it in my handy-dandy grapher. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to enter my function, so I'm going to do 4 times x plus 4. Let me make sure that's what we have. And then I'm going to raise it to the 1 third power. There is a way to put roots in your calculator, but I think by the time you manage it, it's just easier to raise it to the one-third power. And then I'm going to quit. I'm going to go to my table set, and I'm going to tell it to start. Actually, I'm just going to put in a negative 5. And remember, I could also put this in ask, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in ask for the independent variable. I'm going to go to my table, I'm going to move my calculator right here, and I'm going to put in a negative 5, and it tells me that the y value is a negative 4. And then I'm going to do a negative 4, and it's going to tell me that the y value is 0, a negative 3, and the y value is undefined. Why did that happen? For, let me make sure I did it right. At a negative 3, it's a positive 4. Sorry, brain fart. And then if I put in the positive 4, sorry, that's a little bit out of focus, isn't it? If I put in my last point, the positive 4, then I get a positive 8. So if I wanted to, I could graph this by hand, right? So I would graph, notice that my x-intercept is a negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, this is a negative 4, and that's where it's going to cross the x-axis, right? The 4 is a vertical stretch factor, so it makes it taller and skinnier. So now I could actually plot all of these points. 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, I'm going to do these in 2s. 2, 4, 6. This is 8. And this will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, negative 12. So at a negative 4, I'm going to have 0. We did that one. Way over here at a negative 12, I would have a negative 8, okay? Um, 12, 10, 8, so it would be right here. I will get my line going a little bit further. At a negative 5, right here, it would be at a negative 4. And then at a negative 4, I have 0. And then at a negative 3, I have 4, 2, 4. And then at 4, I have 8. So at a positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I would have 8. So if I connect the dots, my graph would look like that. Remember that we can also do, we have the equation in our handy dandy grapher, and I could also do a zoom 6, and that verifies that I have graphed by a table of values. One of the interesting things about this graph, and we'll talk about it when we get to calculus, is kind of this, oops, vertical piece of the graph and it has kind of interesting ramifications when we start talking about calculus but for right now we're just good to go with the graph all right let's do our second example and the second example is going to be about identifying transformations so for example two i want to identify my transformations And my parent function is going to be y is equal to the square root of x. So for the first one, a, I'm going to have g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. This is outside the function, so it is going to go down 2. 
for the second one, I'm going to have g of x is equal to 3 radical x, and that is going to be a vertical stretch of 3. It is outside the function, so it is a vertical change. It is bigger than 1, so it is a stretch. So then c, I'm going to have g of x is equal to 2 times the square root of x plus 3. And remember, we report our transformations left to right. So it is a vertical stretch of 2. And then it is going to go left 3. And it goes left 3 because, remember, if it's inside the function, it's the opposite sign. And then my last one of these is going to be g of x is equal to the square root of a negative x minus 2. Remember, if the negative is on the inside of the function, let me see if I can get that to focus a little bit better. Oh, that's so much better. It is a reflection across the y, so I'm going to reflect across the y-axis, and then I'm going to go down 2. So regardless of the different type of function that we are using, it doesn't matter because the process is still exactly the same. All right, so now we're going to throw in some inequalities because we have done lots of work with inequalities at this point. So we're going to graph the inequality. And I'm going to have y is less than the square root of x plus 2. So like we've talked about before, if I have a y in my inequality, that means that I'm going to actually shade the whole graph. So I'm going to draw my coordinate axis. And if I have the square root of x plus 2, if I look at just this portion of my function, it's the square root function that's been shifted up 2. So I'm going to go up 2. Notice that there's not an equal sign, so that means that my line is going to be a dashed line. And then I'm going to shade below the graph, and so then I'm going to shade everything below the graph. And there we go. That was pretty easy. All right, let's do one more. Let's switch to another piece of paper since this marker's a little bit fatter. So for example, number four, I'm going to do the inequality again. So the directions are the same. Graph the inequality. Alrighty, and I'm going to have y is greater than x plus 4. So again, I'm going to draw my coordinate system my square root function, and then it's going to be shifted four units to the left. So one, two, three, four. This is a negative four. I'm going to graph my function. It's going to go this way. Okay. Uh-oh. Shouldn't have done that because I can't erase with a permanent marker. I guess I'll do it again. My bad. So then this is a negative four. My line doesn't have an equal sign. That means that my line is not included. There's my line. Greater than means that I'm going to shade up. Okay, And you can always check a point to verify and see if it's true. So let's say I chose the point 0, 0. Well, if I substitute this into my equation, I would wonder, is 0 greater than the square root of 0 plus 4? Is 0 greater than 2? And then I would say... No, this is a false statement. Sorry, I was having a serious brain fart. That is a false statement. So that means then that I shaded the other side, so we did well. All right, I have one more graph for us. These are kind of fun because they're really fun little graphs. So example number five says graph the inequality. And I'm going to have y is greater than or equal to the cube root of x minus 3. So I'm going to draw my coordinate system. I know that the cube root is going to be the guy that looks kind of like that. It's going to be shifted 3 units to the right. Okay. And then I do have an equality sign in this one, so I know that my line is going to be part of the solution greater than or equal to, let me scoot this guy up a little bit so you can see it better, means that I'm going to shade above, and then I'm done. So
So remember when we are graphing, and this is just an important thing to remember, if it says y is greater than or equal to some equation, then I'm going to shade the whole graph. On the other hand, if I have x squared plus 2x plus 3 is greater than 5, I'm only going to shade the portion of the line that is above or below the x-axis. And on this one, sorry, I ran out of room, I'm going to report in interval notation. So the important thing to remember is if I have a y, every point that is in this shaded area satisfies this equation. On the other hand, if I just have this type of situation, I graph the function. I like to make it be greater than or equal to zero, but this one's only going to have a very specific solution because it is the portion of the graph of the individual line function that satisfies that condition. All right, my dears, that is it for today. I will see you soon.